Welcome to this program, which is part of the Our Finger Lakes History series. I am Seneca County historian Walter Gable. The program I am calling it a tale of a whale or a whale of a tale. Shown here is a skeleton of a whale that is in the Whaling Museum on Nantucket Island. You may be wondering why on earth, it, what on earth is the connection between this visual and Finger Lakes history? But there is a connection and that is the subject of this segment of our Finger Lakes history. The connection is that Waterloo, New York became known far and near as the place in which the whale burned. Shown here is a poster for the exhibition of a whale in Seneca Falls, New York on November 10 and 11, 1891. More precisely, it would be the public exhibition of a 22-foot segment of a real whale. It was a well-preserved portion of the whale with internal bracing with wooden ribs. It was a thoroughly dried whale and was shaped so that the viewers would have an understanding of the size and shape of a real whale. Shown here at top is the text of that poster. Shown below is an enlargement of the first part of that text. This mammoth whale was captured by Captain Nickerson, June 5, 1888, off Cape Cod, 15 miles from shore, 100 miles from Boston, shot with a boom lance, weighed 75 tons, and was 65 feet long. It took 1,500 gallons of fluid to embalm this huge amount of flesh at a cost of $3,000. You must consider the monstrous size of this animal when his tongue weighed 3,500 pounds and made 120 gallons of oil. His lower jaw will seat 25 persons. His mouth has been fitted up as a reception room. A person six feet tall can stand erect in his mouth between the monster's jaws. We have had 25 young ladies and their teacher in his mouth all at the same time. Also seen 12 gentlemen seated in his mouth enjoying an uh, oyster supper. His whale ship, that's what it was called, has been on exhibition over two years in the principal cities of seven states and viewed by hundreds of thousands of astonished people. It is not only a wonderful sight, but instructive to men, women, and children. The captain and his aides will instruct you of the different species, how they are captured, show you the ancient and modern weapons used to capture them. Go and see for yourself, and if you find this is not a real whale, we will cheerfully refund your money. So from the poster, we know the whale was on exhibit along the canal in Seneca Falls, New York on November 10 and 11, 1891. From Seneca Falls, we know that the whale went to Waterloo to be on exhibit. We know that because it is written up in John Becker's 1949 History of Waterloo. Mr. Becker used a newspaper article that appeared in a local Waterloo newspaper to tell what happened to the whale in Waterloo. Throughout the day, his whale ship was viewed by people paying to see it. I'm not sure of the date, but it was sometime soon after November 11, so let's assume it was November 12. During the day of its being on exhibit, however, there were a few rowdies who made a demonstration against it early in the morning. They took the wagon on which it was on exhibit out into the street. These few rowdies threatened to put the whale in the canal to see if it could swim. But remember, it was only a section of the whale. They didn't actually carry out their threat. The whale was taken back to the tavern barn and locked up 
for the night. About three o'clock the next morning, nearby people were awakened by a bright light. They soon found out that the whale had been taken from the tavern barn, moved out onto the street, and set afire. This is not an actual picture, but it suggests what it could have been happening. A Frenchman who was on duty that night at the hotel ran up to the whale's owner's room and cried, Mr. Parsons, Mr. Parsons, your codfish be all on fire. So his whale ship was burned. The ones who dragged the whale out of the barn and burned the whale were never caught. Mr. Becker concluded his account with a comment shown. It is quoted from a Waterloo newspaper. The burning of the whale did more for Waterloo than was intended. The perpetrators contemplated only a little amusement in rebuking a gross imposition. But had the village been the theater of such a battle and victory as that which has given distinction to the name Waterloo, her namesake across the Atlantic, she would have been scarcely more signalized. On the eastern sea and beyond the father of western rivers and in distant southern climes, this unpretending town became known as the place where the whale burned. But our story of his whale ship does not end there. His whale ship was the basis of Dick Case's column in the February 21, 2012 edition of the Syracuse Post Standard newspaper. A scan of that newspaper is shown in this visual. Al Thon Falcone had contacted Dick Case to see if Case knew about the whale that was on exhibit. Dick Case contacted the Erie Canal Museum and learned that the whale was displayed at the New York State Fair in Syracuse before it went to Seneca Falls in 1891. The Onondaga Historical Association provided Case with a copy of the poster advertising the appearance of the whale in Seneca Falls, the poster I've been showing. After I read Dick Case's February 21st article, I contacted contacted him with additional information about this whale story. Shown here is Dick Case's April 5th, 2012 column in which he told the rest of the story about his whale ship. This is a close-up of the portion of Dick Case's column in which he writes about the information I shared with him, telling about what happened in Seneca Falls and Waterloo. This could be the end of the story but it isn't. There is another whale story that is associated with the Finger Lakes area. In the July 12, 2015 issue of the Finger Lakes Times, Rich McAlpine wrote about Pen Yan's connection to a whaling ship that was actually capsized by a sperm whale in 1820. The true story was about the ship called the Essex. For years, the only known account of this tragic event was that of Owen Chase in his book, Narrative of the Most Extraordinary and Distressing Shipwreck of the Whale Ship Essex that appeared in 1821. Owen Chase was on board the Essex. Chase's book helped to inspire Herman Melville to write his famous novel, Moby Dick, in 1851. About 1960, however, an old notebook was found in the attic of this home in Penyan, New York. In 1980, that notebook was taken to Edward Stackpole, a Nantucket whaling expert. Stackpole quickly realized that the notebook was a true account of the Essex crew tragedy by Thomas Nickerson, who was the young cabin boy on the Essex. 
The notebook was actually a 105-page long manuscript written in 1876 by Thomas Nickerson while he was running a boarding house in Nantucket. Shown here is a picture of Thomas Nickerson late in his life. Shown here is a headshot of Leon Lewis, who was a boarder at Nickerson, Nickerson's boarding house. Leon Lewis took the Thomas Nickerson manuscript with him when he returned to his home in Penyan, with the intent of getting the manuscript ready for publication. However, Lewis in 1879 fled Penyan for financial reasons. As it was said, he left town just ahead of the bill collectors and he fled to England. In 1884, Thomas Nickerson died. Prior to a sheriff's sale of Leon Lewis's property in Penyan, a man named Darius Ogden got possession of several of Leon Lewis's items, including the Nickerson manuscript. It was in Darius Ogden's house in Penyan, shown here, that in 1960, Ann W. Finch found the Thomas Nickerson manuscript in the attic of the house. She took the manuscript to her home in Hamden, Connecticut, where she kept it in a box for another 20 years. She thought the story was pure fantasy, fiction. She was reported as saying the story seemed a little far-fetched to me. I thought it was copied by some sea-struck young man who read it someplace and wanted a copy of it for himself. She did, however, take the Nickerson manuscript with her when she went to Nantucket on vacation in 1980. She took it to the Nantucket Historical Association to see if the staff there thought the manuscript was authentic. Yes, it was authentic. In 1984, the Nantucket Historical Association published the Tab Thomas Nickerson Manuscript with his original title, The Loss of the Ship Essex, Sunk by a Whale and the Crew in Open Boats. In May 2000, noted author Nathaniel Philbrook who lives on Nantucket Island, published a book entitled In the Heart of the Sea. The book deals with the tragedy of the Essex and its crew. The book makes extensive use of Thomas Nickerson's manuscript. The book In the Heart of the Sea spent 40 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list and won the 2000 National Book Award for nonfiction. In December 2015, Warner Brothers released a film version of Nathaniel Philbrook's book. The movie In the Heart of the Sea starred Chris Hemsworth. Tom Holland played the role of cabin boy Thomas Nickerson in the movie. So in closing, I hope you have enjoyed my Tales of a Whale or Whale of a Tale as well as the convoluted way in which Thomas Nickerson's account of the seeking of the whaling ship Essex came to be published and became the basis of the film In the Heart of the Sea. This is another interesting piece of our Finger Lakes history. <laughs>